With that, seeing no other questions, we will now move on to the election of the next Democratic Caucus Vice Chair. Are there any nominations for the position of Democratic Caucus Vice Chair? Shelton. I nominate Supreme Are there any other nominations for Democratic Vice Chair? Tip McGuire. All right, are there any other nominations for Democratic Vice Chair? Are there any other nominations for Democratic Vice Chair? Are there any other nominations for Democratic Caucus Vice Chair? Seeing none, we will allow the nominators to speak, and first we will call upon Representative Shelton. And we do have a mobile mic if you'd like to use it. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's nice to see you all today. Um, I am honored to stand and rise uh, to nominate Supreme Moore Mukunde for Assembly Democratic Caucus Vice Chair. Um, over the past year and a half, I have had the honor to serve alongside Supreme as a friend, as a colleague, and as a fellow champion for working families. And uh, he may not know this, and many of you may not know this, but I actually chose my seat on the assembly floor because I wanted to sit next to him. I don't know if that says more about me than it does about him. <laughs> I was um, particularly inspired by his advocacy, his organizing, the work that he had, has been doing in Milwaukee with Citizen Action and other groups. And it's similar to the work that I had been doing in Green Bay, but I really wanted to learn from him and his experience being a black man in elected government in communities organizing was something that I wanted to learn from and to be able to be inspired by every day. And Supreme brings that experience with him. He brings his whole self to work. And you see that in his floor speeches when he talks passionately about his community and the way that he speaks about issues that really grounds it into what we see people going through every single day. And I'll say that I also appreciate his uh, ability to bring in uh, Wu-Tang uh, uh, quotes as well. It's, it's a nice change of pace sometimes on uh, long assembly floor days. What I also have noticed with Supreme sitting next to him on the assembly floor is that he brings uh, when he brings his full self, he is also incredibly present and, and organized on the uh, on the floor. And on those days when you're a freshman and there's a hundred bills and you're wondering which which way is up and down, Supreme has a, a very clear uh, set of um, organizational tools in front of him. He always knows exactly what's going on, and he's always present in his seat um, and helping others and answering questions. He has also been a colleague for me when I'm looking for feedback and constructive um, consideration of ideas that I have. And I have also been compelled to send my other friends and colleagues in our caucus to him as well, because I know he'll give it to me straight, but in a way that's caring, uh, because he knows that we're in this work together. And I, I appreciate that, uh, Supreme. But the last thing I'll say is that Supreme is committed to uplifting others and developing his skills and serving this caucus. And that's why I was really honored when he asked me today to nominate him for this position. Thank you. We will allow the candidates to speak. And so now I will call upon Representative Mora Omokunde. How's everybody this afternoon? Good. Awesome. So I'm going to take my mask off because I think I'm amongst people that uh, acknowledge safety protocols. And I'm going to make sure I'm distant. So first and foremost, I want to thank my colleagues for giving me the opportunity to run today and also the many conversations that I've had over the last week. Um, there's been some great conversations giving me questions that you wanted to ask and being willing to share certain things with me. Through those conversations, I realized that uh, caucus vice chair breaks down to four R's. Raising money, raising interest, related, being relatable, and realizing our goal of getting back into the majority. And I've said this before. First and foremost, with raising money, uh, we have to come through for ordinary Wisconsinites. And raising money is about having folks feel invested in what we're doing here 
And they, if they feel invested, they'll donate and they'll give their dollars because we represent the ordinary Wisconsinites. We also won't have the specter of Donald Trump to run against. Um, so there will be some creative ways that we'll need to bring dollars in. Um, however, it's not just about the dollars coming in, it's the dollars going out and how we prioritize where we spend those dollars and what we do with that money as well. And I'll speak more to that uh, when we talk, talk later about uh, raising other things. It's also, um, I've been told that the money is the fuel for the machine that we're trying to run here. And we use the fuel to, are we using high octane fuel or regular fuel is, I, I guess, is the question. Uh, the second R is about raising interest. We have to make sure that we're raising interest in our caucus. It's not just, oh, it's a presidential year, the Democrats need, there's more money so they can get it. Or it's a year that we gotta make sure we're protecting the governor's veto. So we'll you know, invest more into the Democrats. Folks have to be concerned and thinking about what we're doing in this caucus. People have to be invested in our caucus members. We have to profile our members all across the state. And especially it'll be important in profiling incoming members as folks like Henson, Hasselbein and Spritzer and Myers and others leave us for greener pastures, if you will, and we're bringing in those newer members. Um, it's also about uh, making sure that we're expanding our caucus, not just in numbers, but in diversity and in diversity of thought in diversity of background and diversity of interests, et cetera. Um, so we can have more of the caucus that actually looks like the people of Wisconsin, um, less like the other caucus on the other side of the building. Um, also, it's about relatability. One of the key jobs of the caucus vice chair, first and foremost, is to back up the caucus chair. And we have a great one in Lisa. And I think I would be a good contrast in Lisa, making sure that uh, I am speaking to members, members are speaking to me, and we're also speaking to individuals outside of the building um, as well. And making sure that we're not using just the political speak that we use in this building when we're talking to people outside of the building. Making sure that we're communicating effectively and folks know what we, that we know what we're doing, that we're working in this building. We're at a very key point in our time right now. Um, we're in, kind of in a transitional period right now um, with our caucus and with our leadership and, and everything. And we need to make sure that we are connecting with folks so they understand and have a clear picture of who we are. Um, One of the main things I think in, in recognizing the conversations I've had over the past week, one of the conversations has been about institutional knowledge. Um, I think the larger question has to be, if, is that institutional knowledge of accessible to all and particularly incoming members? And I think that a key role for caucus vice chair is to make sure that we're dealing with inclusion. We're including everybody. Everybody feels brought in. Everybody feels like they have a seat at the table. Everybody feels like they're on the same page. And I think that's a key component of caucus vice chair being able to relay that message. Also, I think it's really important that when we talk about realizing our goal of getting back into the majority, um, that we talk about Milwaukee. And Milwaukee is still our greatest opportunity to expand our caucus, um, you know, making sure that you, what, are we speaking every day, average Milwaukeeans? Are we making sure that we're intentional about how we speak about Milwaukee in this building? I know the other side of the aisle likes to lambast and use coded language to speak about Milwaukee. However, we have to make sure that we're speaking in a way that uplifts uh, our largest state and our, our economic engine because they want to continue a vicious cycle of lambasting and talk about talking about Milwaukee in a way and talking about people in a way we have to kind of create a virtuous cycle a virtuous cycle that says we need to be speaking about members speaking about places in our city and uplift uplifting them uh, so before I sit down I want to say that it's really important um, and I think that my candidacy and my service as a caucus vice chair is really about you know, me being an outgoing freshman now and an incoming sophomore in the, in the new term, it's about being that bridge. And everybody needs a bridge. We've had debates about bridges going from here to there. Everybody needs a bridge. And being the bridge between kind of incoming members trying to come and be a part of this caucus and then outgoing members 
uh, uh, replacing those outgoing members or connecting to our leadership, connecting to our institutional knowledge, collecting, connecting to those who have been here a while and who can be that bridge between those two groups of individuals. So thank you uh, for hearing my words today and hopefully I can earn your support. Thanks.